you don't learn from failure. You learn from success. Our parents and teachers, they tell us that failure is good because you learn from it. But the truth is, we only learn from our successes, and that's our human default. And can we learn from failure? Well, it's extremely rare, and I'm going to demonstrate it with a personal story and also with science. When I was in school, some friends and I, we tried to do a lot of business projects. Some of them were failures, others were successes, and most of them were in the middle. So first, we started to try to sell T-shirts, which was a complete disaster. Then we tried doing classes, teaching classes, which was kind of a success. We then tried to build a fabrication laboratory because our school didn't have one. And then, because we learned from the class's success and other successes, we had the great idea. An idea that really worked. We had revenue. It was called Totem, and it was an online shop uh, for customized jewelry. The good thing about the Totem success is that I could point at the specific factors that made it successful. So it was a very emotional product, which was great for gifting. We nailed the online marketing, and we built an amazing team of 24 people. So I could draw conclusions and learn. We tend to believe that when we work on an idea really hard for a long period of time, then that idea is going to be successful. But the truth is that we don't decide if it's going to be successful or not. The environment, the market, if you're doing a business, decides if it's useful for society or not. So we can say that quantity of ideas equals more probability of quality of ideas. And it makes sense to shorten those cycles and prototype more if you're in business, or do more variations if you're trying to master a skill. So with its success, oops. So with its success, you learn, and you build a skill over time. We have seen that more ideas equals more quality of ideas. And that's not that all of the ideas are great. It means that if there's more amount of ideas, then we increase the probability of getting good ideas. And I don't say that. It's been demonstrated over and over in history and in science. For example, the best artists are those who produce the most. Picasso produced over 20,000 pieces. That is five pieces of art per week. And that's a lot. Also, in business, Richard Branson, Virgin's founder, he founded 250 companies, which is a lot. And in science, we can measure how good a scientist is if they are referenced often. Because that means their work is valuable. And it turns out that the scientists that publish the most papers, they're also the ones who are referenced the most. So these geniuses, they don't produce because they are successful. They are successful because they produce, and they produce a lot. So they produce really great ideas at the same time that a lot of crappy ones. And that's the reason why we only remember some Picassos out of the 20,000 that he painted. OK, coming back to the t-shirts in college, I'm, I'm getting flashbacks. Um, it was so hard for me why we didn't sell. I thought the designs were cool. I thought we were doing great marketing. But it was a failure, and it hurt my ego. And 
I just wanted to tune out and jump to the next thing and not learn anything from it. So this phenomena of the ego and learning is beautifully explained in the study by Fishback and Askeis Rinker. So these scientists asked people, which, ones, which one of these two symbols represents an animal? Of course, nobody knew because it was an ancient language. So 50% of them approximately got it right, and 50% of them got it wrong. After some time, oh, well, so the ones who got it right, they were told, hey, you got it right, congratulations. And the ones who got it wrong, they were told, you failed. But because it was a question with only two answers, they all knew the correct answer. And after some time, they repeated that same question to the same people. And it turns out that the people who got it right the first time got most of the answers right. However, the people who got it wrong the first time failed many of the answers. So what is the con uh, they failed most of the answers even though they knew the correct answer too. So the conclusion of the study is that it's much easier to learn from our successes and not so much from our failures. So scientists theorized and they asked themselves, why is it so? They thought that when we fail, our self-esteem is hurt. And we just want to tune out because we hate to be wrong, we want to run away. So, I want you to think, when was the last time you messed up in life? I'll give you a minute. When was the last time you failed with a friend or at work? Think about it. Okay. Right after messing up, what did you think? A. Let me stop and reflect on what I did wrong? Or B. Oh, I need to fix this mess and do better the next time. So most of us are going to go for B just because it's our human default. And what is funny is that these scientists trying to prove right or not if the ego was involved, they showed to some people other answers from other people. So the observer looking at other person, person's failures, and the observer looking at other person's correct answers, they both learned the same thing simply because their egos weren't involved. It was somebody else who was, learning, who was failing. And also, as you can see, these observers learned the same than people learning from their own successes. So, can we learn from others' failures? Yes, it's easy. We just saw it. And can we learn from our own failures? This is very hard because it requires that we drop our ego. If we don't drop our ego, then we don't learn. Because our ego is blinding us from the truth. It doesn't let us learn. However, if we drop our ego, then there's a chance for us to learn. And we can do so in two ways. The first one, which is a little bit easier is with the help of another person. So it goes like this. Hello, friend. This is my failure. And my friend says very nicely, because they know how to communicate smoothly and not hurt my ego. They say, well, it looks like you failed because you did this and that, and I'm here all defensive, wanting to reply to everything they say, not listening. So what I should do more often is to 
bite my tongue, take a deep breath, humble myself, and listen. And that's how you learn from your own failures through another person, which is hard, right? We all know that. And then the other way to learn from our own failures, which is even harder because we need to drop our egos even more, is by detaching ourselves from the ego and looking at the failure with equanimity. So first, we stop being defensive from our own actions. And second, we, ref we reflect on our failures. Okay, so summing up, we have three ways to learn. The easiest is to learn from our successes. We need to try a lot of things, variate a lot, because otherwise we won't get to the successful ones. And we can also learn from other people's failures. A harder one is to tell our, fa to, to tell our failures to a friend, and they will tell us what they learned, but this one requires to be humble. And the last one, which is the super difficult one, is to drop our egos a lot and then apply this formula. Failure plus reflection equals learning. Thank you.